of this particular chapter system surroundings and all this six statement very important if you understand this six statement you'll understand the concept of system and surroundings it looks like very simple types of system open close isolated but this kind of statement is very important to understand okay next next term we are going to see is write down the heading state variables state variables right don't it defines the state of a system defines the state of a system the various state variables are we have pressure volume temperature mainly this three okay in gas state also we have discussed if you want to define the position of a gas you have to define the pressure volume and temperature at that point okay when all the state variables write down when all the state variables are constant all must be all right then the system is said to be said to be at a particular state copy this down the state variables for solid we define by uh, you know by it's by the coordinate any object if you have we use the coordinate system to define the state x y coordinate like that okay and coordinates also we have different coordinate system cartesian coordinate we have you know polar coordinates we have for fluids also we have similar kind of uh, system done okay now you see if a given state the pressure is a to b we have suppose a and b two states we have at a the pressure is pa va and ta and b the pressure is pv vb and tb okay so when the system goes from a to b so there will be a change in state we can have this is this thing is possible that only one variable is changing only two variable is changing or all the variables are changing anything is possible all the three possibilities we have only one two or all three variables are changing possible right so this change in state variable whenever it is happening we say the change in state is also taking place for that state no, it means the position not the physical change like solid to liquid liquid to gas not like that the position is changing right different states we have so all these things which is happening here like we must have certain path to change the state of a system right we must have a certain you know way to change the state of a system right so all these path the different way we have we call it as processes right so change in position or a state of a given uh, you know a uh, gaseous species is taking place by different different ways we have different different path for this on all these ways and paths 
are known as processes. Correct? Like for example, you see, if the pressure is constant from A to B, then we call it as isobaric process. If the temperature is constant, A to B, isothermal process. Like that, we have isochoric process when the volume is constant. When there is no exchange of heat, adiabatic process, right? When the initial and final state is same, cyclic process. So like this, we define the processes. We'll come back to this process thing again after some time. But before going into that, we'll see thermodynamic properties. Write down. Thermodynamic properties, we have two types. Okay. The first one is extensive properties. Write down. These are the properties which depends upon these are the properties which depends upon which depends upon the quantity or which depends upon the quantity or the amount of the substance present. Which depends upon the quantities or the amount of the substance present. So what I said, it depends upon Second one is intensive property. Important also, they ask this, you know, properties in the exam also, very often, okay, important. Intensive property, you have to memorize all this. So intensive property is exactly opposite of it. It depends upon the quantity and amount of substance. It is independent of. quantity or the amount. Yeah. Okay, tell me. Density. Density. Intensive or extensive? Density is intensive, right? Don't get confused. It is an intensive property because suppose if you have water, so if you take one glass of water or one bucket of water, the density of water won't change. Correct? 
So density is an intensive property. Don't get confused that D is equals to mass by volume. So since, since it depends upon mass, it is extensive, no. Yeah, that's what we have. You see what happens. I'll take one example here, you see. Suppose you have a container, okay? And the mass here is 2M, 2M, and the volume is 2V. I'm assuming this. What is the density in this case? M by V, 2 and 2 will get canceled. So if the mass is 2M, density is M by V, 2 and 2V. Now, suppose if you distribute this or, you know, just distribute this into two equal halves so that the mass of this side is M, volume is V, mass of this side is M, volume is V. What is the density of this part? The half part, again, M by V. So you see, whether you take mass as M or 2M, the density is same only, M by V. Why it happens? Because when you change the mass in the same proportion, volume also changes. And overall, it you know makes the ratio M by V constant. Correct? No, it's not like that. I'm talking about one particular type of object. Like suppose if you take water, density of water, you cannot mix something into it. Then it won't be the same thing because we have two different types of objects present in this. You can take water, you can take benzene, you can take any other thing. Yes, for the same object. Means if you're taking oil, then only oil. Water, only water. Chloroform, only chloroform. Any gas, the same gas if you're talking about. The system is same only, amount is changing, we can say, Aditya. If you mix the same thing into the given system, then the amount mass of the system will change, but system will be the gas only or the liquid only, whatever it is. Suppose if you have one glass of water, correct, you can put some more water into it. The system is water only, correct, but the mass of water has been changed. And in the same ratio, the volume will also change. So that M by V, the ratio is constant overall. Hence density is constant. So this is for your understanding, right? Uh, what is intensive and extensive property? But there are many examples, especially for in, for you know intensive property. We have so many examples that you have to you know memorize because in question they'll ask you which one of this is intensive or extensive property. So one by one we'll see the example. So write down first of all the example of extensive property. Heat capacity is extensive. Mass extensive, volume extensive, number of moles extensive, gives free energy, gives free energy is represented by capital Z extensive, enthalpy. Notation also you must remember, enthalpy is represented by H, again extensive, entropy, S, extensive, and then we have internal energy. Internal energy is represented by capital U or capital E. Okay, both are same thing. So all these are extensive property. Then
next you see intensive see one thing enthalpy is enthalpy is extensive property okay but when we write molar enthalpy one just a second guys Okay, so yeah, so what I said, enthalpy is uh, you know uh, extensive. When we when we write molar enthalpy, so molar enthalpy means what? enthalpy of one mole so when you write molar term here it becomes intensive property because for one mole it will be fixed right so enthalpy is extensive molar enthalpy is intensive okay similarly when you write molar entropy molar entropy this also becomes intensive because it is again for one mole correct this is one thing that you must keep in mind apart from this you see all the concentration term are intensive property concentration for example molarity molality okay um we can say um mole fraction all these are uh you know intensive property concentration term okay we have already discussed density is intensive temperature is intensive pressure is also intensive okay refractive index you will study in physics refractive index also intensive A specific heat a specific term also if you have seen written here a specific means for one gram molar means for one mole so whenever you see this two term is specific or molar written before any term it is always intensive did you get it whenever a term starts with is molar or a specific then it is an intensive property a specific means for one gram molar means for one mole viscosity is always intensive viscosity surface tension surface tension dielectric constant these terms you will get in physics okay you won't have any use in chemistry but ha huh, just example you must remember because they ask all these things in the exam dielectric constant ph we'll discuss about ph in ionic equilibrium a lot ph is also an intensive property emf of the cell emf also we'll see in 12th class electrochemistry the chapter emf of the cell is intensive property
बॉइलिंग पॉइंट इंटेंसिव मेल्टिंग पॉइंट इंटेंसिव आदर यू टेक अ क्यूब ऑफ आइस और यू टेक a large slab of ice its melting point is same okay so melting point is intensive okay molar volume you see here volume is extensive i have written here volume is extensive but when you write molar volume it is intensive specific volume also specific volume also intensive okay resistivity conductivity conductivity resistivity all these are intensive yes copy it pressure is intensive only no you see um, like it 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 is uh, you will study you will understand this thing in a better way once you this once you understand the concept of vapor pressure okay vapor pressure is independent of the amount of vapor that is present right it depends upon the temperature only at a given temperature the vapor pressure of water is fixed constant okay that value won't change no matter what amount of vapor you are taking okay there is an equation called clausius clapeyron equation okay that equation relates vapor pressure and temperature and there is nothing like amount of vapor we are considering in order to derive that expression okay so we'll discuss that later okay uh, in uh, in in chemical equilibrium we have a bit of it and then in discuss in in you know in detail we'll see this in solution chapter in grade 12 okay so for now let's just to keep this in mind that pressure is independent of amount it is an intensive property okay so all these properties are important guys so you must uh, take care of this okay they ask this question in the exam that which is intensive or extensive property okay so this is the uh, thing we have so this two things are important one more thing you see here i'll tell you density what i said one relation you try to understand density density is mass by volume correct density is mass by volume correct so density we have discussed this it is an intensive property i'm just trying to make you understand one relation here it is intensive what is mass mass is extensive volume is also extensive okay so what we can conclude from this relation 
that whenever we have the ratio of two extensive property, the ratio becomes an intensive property. Write down this note, it's very important. Ratio of two extensive properties becomes intensive. Okay. Okay, guys, sorry, there was someone, so I have to attend them. Okay, so uh, understood, right? Huh. See, volume is extensive. No, if you take, uh, you know, um, more mass, if you take, it will occupy more space, Anurag. Right, so, no, whenever you change the mass, obviously it will occupy more space. So mass and volume are related, hence it is extensive. Got it? That's not an issue, Aditya. Whether it is linearly or not, right? That's not an issue, but whenever we have the ratio of extensive, it is always an intensive property. Ah, yes, if you have uh, the kind of thing that you are asking, in the same proportion if mass and volume is not changing, right? 
then we'll have some difference, but usually it doesn't happen, right? So we consider that linear relation of mass and volume. Yeah, that's what Anurag was talking about, right? So you just consider here the linear relation, right? So this is one very important, you know, aspect we have of this. Uh, with this, you can easily understand and memorize those, uh, you know, uh, uh, examples that we have done because it's very important. This is the first thing that they ask very frequently in this uh, chapter. Now, after this, we need to understand thermodynamic functions. Okay, write down the heading next, thermodynamic functions. Okay, thermodynamic functions. Two types of thermodynamic functions we have. First one is uh, state function. State function. So uh, state function is the one which is independent of path. Independent of path. Like uh, I'll, I'll give you some examples also. Okay? First, 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 let me write down all these things. State function is independent of path. It just depends upon the state of the, of the system, like initial and final state, that is it. Path function is the another one. Path function, which depends upon path, okay? It is independent of path and this one depends upon path. Depends on path. Uh, once again, Nora, once again. You see, if you have this point A, and from this point A, you want to go to point B. And we have certain, you no, know, uh, uh, what we say, variables here, right? P, A, V, A, T, A, P, V, 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 T, B. So function is the collection of, the, of those kind of variables. So function is what? It is a collection of those variables, which is independent of path. Now what I say, you have to go from A to B. How would you go? There are infinite number of paths, right? You can, one thing is what, you can go directly from A to B. This is one way possible. Another is what, you can travel like this, you know, whatever the way you like, you can travel like this, okay? You can travel also like this. So like this, we have infinite number of paths possible, isn't it? But the final state is B only. It's like you want to go to, you know, uh, Chennai from Bangalore, right? So you can go directly to Chennai or you can go to Hyderabad and then Chennai, go to Delhi and then Chennai, whatever, right? So there are infinite number of paths possible, but the destination, final destination is what? Is Chennai only. So here it is B. So A and B, two points we have, there are infinite number of paths possible. Now, suppose there are three paths I have drawn over here. Tell me if you, if you talk about the, uh, you know, in terms of work, work done, right? Which path will give you will require maximum work done, one, two, and three. Which path will require maximum work done? Or simply if I ask you, in which path you have to put more fuel? Third, because this path is the longest one. Longest one, the longest, uh, and the maximum amount of fuel is required for this, okay? Means if you talk about heat, if you talk about work, if you talk about any kind of energy, all those energies are path dependent. Okay, depends upon path. Like if you go from this path, you will have a certain amount of energy required, fuel required. This certain amount of fuel required. This maximum amount of fuel required. So work done or heat or any energy, if you think of, all these things are path function. Is it, is it clear? So we can write the example here, heat, 
work done all our path functions isn't it it depends upon the path that you choose correct independent is what independent of path state function we can think of pressure we can think of volume we can think of temperature we can think of enthalpy we can think of, think of internal energy gives free energy entropy all these are state function means if the pressure at a is pa pressure at a is pa b is pb no matter what path you choose 1 2 or 3 the pressure at b is always pb correct volume vb temperature tb are you getting it that's why the pressure and all other terms variables that i have written all other variables are state function it just depends upon initial and final does depends upon the state of the function the state of the system yes clear any doubt in this tell me heat means energy we are talking about heat in the sense of energy we are taking heat as in you can say heat exchange okay so longer path you need to travel so more heat will be will get exchanged clear any doubt guys speak up any doubt till now because these are the basic understanding we'll have the application of all these things later on okay so you have to understand this enthalpy will discuss terms aditya will discuss enthalpy and all we'll discuss that a bit later just you keep the example in mind we'll see definition and uses of this everything we'll discuss later okay like i said this is just an introduction going on okay like i said there are so many things we need to understand new new terms we have so we are trying to understand that enthalpy if you want i can tell you just one line over here it is a heat content of the system at constant pressure right at constant pressure what is the heat content is the enthalpy of the system we'll see that later we'll discuss okay clear enthalpy is represented by h u i already said it is an internal energy gives free energy entropy this notation you must remember okay next write down thermodynamic equilibrium write down a system is said to be a system is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium thermodynamic equilibrium when when it is at thermal chemical and and mechanical equilibrium but all three types of equilibrium are there then it is at thermodynamic equilibrium okay so what is thermal equilibrium thermal equilibrium is based on temperature same temperature we have right so i'll just write down quickly this thing here thermal equilibrium
it is based on based on temperature constant temperature we have okay t constant there is no heat flow because the temperature difference is not there thermal equilibrium right one at 100 degree celsius other one at 50 degree celsius if you keep them close two objects in contact then there will be heat flow from 100 to 50 and the heat will flow until the temperature becomes equal for both the objects okay so when it is become equal we say the two objects are in thermal equilibrium okay chemical equilibrium <coughs> excuse me you see chemical equilibrium is related with concentration right so constant concentration if you have constant concentration then it is in chemical equilibrium we'll discuss this in detail in the next chapter that is chemical equilibrium chemical equilibrium is this constant concentration okay mechanical equilibrium mechanical equilibrium net force is zero right net force is zero or we can also say equal pressure force is nothing but you know pressure um, pressure is force per unit area correct so when pressure is equal force per unit area is also equal so equal pressure we have okay one note you write down this is the assumption that we take wherever we apply the concept of thermodynamics write down thermodynamics deals with thermodynamic deals with the system which are in the system which are in thermodynamic equilibrium thermodynamic deals with the system which are in system which are in thermodynamic equilibrium correct you won't get any question on this just for information you should know okay that whenever we apply the concept of thermodynamics we assume the system is in thermodynamic equilibrium okay so this is for thermodynamic equilibrium okay next we are going to see thermodynamic processes What is a process? Write down, it is an operation. It is an operation by which a system system is changing its state is changing its state it denotes the path followed path followed by the system by the system while changing the state okay so what is the path by which the system is changing the state this path is the process that is what i have discussed a few minutes back a to b the system is going on pressure is getting changed so whatever path we have possible from a to b all those paths are called one kind of processes. 
ओके राइट वेन आई से सिस्टम इज चेंजिंग इट स्टेट Yes, all path we can say. All path we can say, right? So when I say when we say system is changing its state, so change means what? You see, this changing in state. Now this change also can be of three types: physical change, chemical change, or change in state variables. Okay, change you see it is also of three types. we have physical change what do you mean by physical change physical change means chemical change and then the last one we have we have change in state variables so physical change means state is changing right solid to liquid liquid to gas all these that you have is physical change chemical change is the reaction like reactant to product the conversion and change in state variables change in state variables is the change in pressure volume temperature all these state variable change we have copy this down done okay now what are the different different process we have we'll discuss uh, all these process the most important one we have s is solid l is liquid state solid liquid and gas state change okay anurag none okay few processes that we already know we have discussed it the first one you see we have isothermal process what is isothermal process iso means equal thermal means heat right so isothermal process we have constant temperature process constant temperature process isobaric what is isobaric what is isobaric iso is again same bar is this bar is the unit of pressure so it is constant pressure process and the third one in this chain we have isocoric okay isocoric it is the third variable that is constant volume so this you must remember temperature pressure and third one is volume okay apart from this three the next one we have adiabatic process adiabatic process is the one right down in this process there is no exchange of heat there is no heat exchange delta q q stands for heat delta q is zero correct 
after this we have cyclic process cyclic process is the one in, in, in which the initial and final state is same write down initial and final state is same for example you see consider this process okay you start from a and then you go to b then from b you go to c c you go to d and then again from d you go to a so initial state is a final is also a cyclic process we can have a circle also like this okay this we can also consider as the cyclic process correct this is a cyclic process so initial and final state is same it is a cyclic process now when initial and final state is same all the state variables are what the change in write down here since initial and final state is same the change in all state variable in state variable equals to zero like if you write down delta p delta p pressure is the state variable delta p means what pf minus pi final minus initial f stands for final i stands for initial since initial final pressure is same only because the state is same so this is equals to what zero any doubt in this delta v equals to delta t equals to delta u equals to delta h equals to delta g equals to delta s equals to zero all these change in state variables is equals to zero p is the pressure yes weber p is the pressure only if it is anything else i would have you know told you p is pressure yeah copy it all of you yes 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 this entire thing till here is cyclic done okay you have done this chapter in physics and you must know if pv relation is given pv graph is given how do you find out work done pv graph is given how do you find out work done area under curve right yes area under curve we do that in pv graph okay yes sometimes what happens they don't give you pv graph they give you pt graph or vt graph so if you are able to convert this pt or vt graph into pv graph you can find out the work done easily okay so how do you do that we'll discuss that first so right heading right on we are discussing all these things under process only right so process will have a very much very you know um, uh a lot of things we need to discuss in process so we are discussing this in the process so graph conversion you write down based on the process how do we draw the 
graph which is not given here so you see what happens Okay. Now you see we have PT graph. Suppose we have given, and the PT graph is this. Starts from origin. okay this is point a this is b this is c process is this only right process is this only i have just drawn this line here to origin so that you understand that this line is passes through origin just for this information okay this is the pt graph given you need to convert this graph into pv first graph into pv and then we'll see how do we convert this into vt this is the graph we need to do so you see in this along this ab process that we have what is this process ab what is constant from a to b if you go a to b compare this from pv is equals to nrt how it is p constant from a to b yes temperature is everywhere in kelvin madam yes v is constant consider this guys consider this one pv is equals to nrt if p and t will have a straight line passing through origin it means v is constant so ab the process is isochoric no doubt similarly bc could you tell me bc we have constant temperature line right it is iso thermal and what is ca ca is isobaric because the pressure is constant so all these three process we have correct now we need to convert this into pv graph how do we do that we know pv graph at constant temperature what it would be listen to me carefully pv graph at constant temperature it will go like this yes or no yes or no right now we have to understand that it is a constant pressure temperature graph we have and constant temperature graph here it is b to c it is a constant temperature graph it means this point is either b or c if it is b then this point should be this point should be if it is b then this is c if it is c then this is b these are two possibilities yes so we have to just you know cross check this that which should be b which should be c that is the first thing okay so what i am telling you i am just taking this top is the b and bottom is the c for for an example and then we'll cross check in the last that our that our assumption is correct or not so what i am telling here i am telling this is b and i am taking this as c so this is the graph we have b to c
I'm just taking this as B and C. If it does not hold true for the entire process, for the other process, we have to change it on. But you need to like this only you need to guess and check. Okay. Now, since I have taken this, because PV graph at constant temperature is this only, no? Hyperbola, constant temperature, PV is goes to NRT, T is constant. So PV graph is what? It's like this only. A different, different temperature. Yes. Anybody has doubt in this graph at constant temperature? Tell me. Anurag, tell me, did you understand this? We have done this in a uh, gas state also, now. When temperature is constant, Boyle's law, the graph is this, like this it goes, remember? Yeah, the same graph we have here. Correct? So what I have assumed here, B is this, C is this. What is happening from B to C? You see, the pressure is decreasing and the volume is increasing. What happens over here? The pressure is decreasing. Obviously, when the pressure decreases, right, temperature is constant, volume will increase. It means the assumption that we have taken that this is B, this is C is correct here. If you consider this one, if you consider this as C and this as B, then B to C is this, B to C, the volume is decreasing and pressure is increasing. Relation is not wrong, but it does not suit this particular relation that we have here. From B to C in this graph, what we have, pressure should decrease because it is decreasing here. So pressure is decreasing, temperature is constant, so volume is increasing. So here also we have the same thing. From B to C, the pressure should decrease, then the volume will increase and the temperature is constant. It does not suit this particular graph here. That's why I'll do this change here. What I'll do, I'll again go back to the initial assumption that we had. This point is B, this point is C, and the process is this. All of you understood this? Yes, clear. Tell me fast. Right? Now, we have two options for A, like two places for a not option places for a either we can take a this side or we can take a this side yes is there any other possibility we can take like this only you know then only we have a b c line like this we cannot place this here symmetrical arrangement basically we are considering correct so suppose if the this one you are taking so i'll go like this a to b and then C like this. So A to B, B to C, C to A. So A to B, what is happening, you see? What is happening A to B? A to B, you see, the volume is decreasing, pressure is constant. A to B, you see. Do we have constant pressure A to B? Do we have constant pressure A to B? Yes, tell me. Do we have A to B, constant pressure? No. A to B, you see, the pressure is increasing. It means this assumption is what? This assumption is wrong. So we won't take this. Just remove, remove it off. Correct? Now this is A. So line should go like this. It will come down. And then like this it goes. Okay? So A to B, so the process direction is this. A to B, then B to C, and then C to A. So what is happening in this, you see? A to B, we have constant volume, pressure is increasing. Again, here you see, A to B, we have constant volume, pressure is increasing. B to C, we have constant temperature, pressure is decreasing, volume is increasing. B to C, constant temperature, pressure is decreasing, volume is increasing. C to A, we have constant pressure, volume is decreasing. C to A, we have constant temperature, Temperature is decreasing, which means volume is also decreasing, temperature and volume. Hence, this graph is the correct conversion we have this side. One second, Anurag. Again, I'll explain. Wait. 
how many of you understood this conversion understood okay so let's i'll explain right correct one more thing well like one more way like you can understand this uh, one more time we'll discuss this see if you don't if you don't want to take a over here then you can take a this side suppose but if you a take here then this is a to c process this is a to b process so what happens from a to b you see the pressure is constant a to b you see the entire line the pressure is constant but here what happens here a to b the pressure is not constant is increasing yes shesh anurag you understood what i said a to b if you consider this a over here right pressure is constant but here the pressure is not constant hence this assumption of a being here is not correct right and we know a to b we have constant you know we have constant volume process b to c constant temperature c to a constant pressure process right that's why we are trying to have this a either on this side or this side that because that is the only possibility we have when you practice some questions you will understand that how do we think about these points okay so obviously this point is you know is not correct so we'll just eliminate this out and we'll take a point over here then you connect a and b a and c and you cross check the entire relation that we have given in this graph does it hold true here also or not if it is true it means the graph is correct if not it means you have done some mistake into this tell me is it clear clear no doubt okay try this conversion v to t v to t first of all is a constant temperature process where we have constant temperature is b to c b to c we have constant temperature so we can have a line we can have a line like this which gives you constant temperature line suppose we have a line like this constant temperature line b to c yeah should we place now we know this line is b to c process but where is b on the top or on the bottom where is b on the top or on the bottom on the bottom okay so now we'll take it on the top first if you take this on the top then b to c what happens b to c the volume is decreasing b to c you see here what happens the pressure is decreasing when pressure decreases volume increases so this assumption is not correct did you understand tell me shresh yes yes you can do that shresh no problem yes so b to c we have checked what volume is decreasing so here also volume should decrease but what is happening b to c pressure is decreasing pressure and volume are inversely proportional it means the volume is increasing it means our assumption is wrong and the correct assumption is this b we must have here and c we must have here this is a process b to c we have no no i'm just you never know see anurag this is what you need but they can give you vt pt anything they can give you so you should know all these conversions it's not like i'm going from this to this and this to this i'm just trying to convert this into this this into this so that you can do all kind of conversion okay just for practice yeah so b to c is this now c to a is constant process I means c to a process must passes through this uh, origin then only the pressure would be constant isn't it so i'm assuming a somewhere here c to a so this is a and this would be b to a straight line so this is a we have here so b to c c to a and a to b now you can cross check all the data you will get it right c to a you see what is happening volume is decreasing and temperature is decreasing 
C two A you see. C two A pressure is constant, but temperature is decreasing. C two A temperature is decreasing. A two B constant volume temperature is increasing. A two B constant volume temperature is increasing. So this is the graph we have of V T. Isn't it clear? Tell me any doubt? No. Okay. Fine, guys. So we'll take a break now. After the break, we'll see two more processes here: reversible and irreversible process. Okay. Take a break. Seven o'clock. We'll start. <laughs> 